Hey, beautiful beings. Once in a while, I'm hanging out with someone interesting, and I realize we're going into a really interesting discussion, and I want to record it, and I don't have my professional equipment, so I just whip up my phone and grab the audio. So this is officially a woke as fuck gorilla podcast. Let me know what you think. That means if you're on YouTube, it's just going to be a picture of us two doing this. But still, leave us a comment. Uh, join the uh, the woke Telegram group, and uh, yeah, give us your thoughts and comments. And hopefully uh, you enjoy it. See you later. Are you ready to get woke? Welcome to the Woke as F*** podcast with your host, Alex Lazarev. Cool. All right. So, you were saying? You were saying yeah, spiritual egotism. So, when, when you spent enough time like on the path and trying to talk to new people, because as you refine your understanding of the world and you, would, you naturally attract you more and more people that help you get more refined in that understanding of yourself. I think a lot of the times we want to put our faith in another person, but ultimately everybody just has their own problems themselves. And I've always reminded myself of this, like, oh, I have a lot of reverence for this person. Uh, I have a lot of respect for this person. And then over time, the cracks start to show um, in another person or in yourself, right? So it's, it's it's a matter of spiritual egotism where some some people will think that they are very spiritually enlightened, but then you'll realize that there's an issue that's going on that they haven't resolved yet. And it's interesting to me to kind of really step back and be like, I don't think anybody has it all figured out. All I can do is just learn from other people and see what they have figured out and what I can have of value to myself and then move on. But then I look at that, I'm like, that's a very... That's a very um, selfish way of viewing those things. It's like, I'm only going to learn from you what I need to learn and then I'm going to move on. But paradoxically, when you learn about those things, you become a better person to where you can be a better role model for other people. Does that make sense? So it's a paradox. Sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I want to know what you think about that, about this whole spiritual egotism. Like when things get more and more and more refined – what does what does it truly look like to have somebody that really is awakened? What does that look like? I don't even think it looks like something. I think it feels like something. It feels like when you're around that person, there's a feeling. And you don't get it. You don't know why. But it's just that stillness. It's that, it's that understanding. And any time I, I say something like, oh, I, I made this song. I think this sounds good or... Or I did this, or I did that. I, it's like something inside of myself is like, ah, nah, yeah, you're slipping up. It's like that's not you, mm-hmm. and it's just more and more silence of no, that's not you. Don't say that. No, it's not you. Don't say that. No, it's not you. Don't even indicate it. Don't even infer it. Just let it be. Yeah. So I want to know what your thoughts are on that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a hell of a thing. Um, yeah, I was saying to you before that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you're around someone who's in line, you, you won't know. You, you you won't know the depth of it. You you might you'll just get a feeling like oh, it just seems like what a nice. They're a really nice person. They seem really sweet. You know, you think like, oh, they're really nice. That, that that's how you describe. Oh, they're such a such a great, really beautiful person. But unless they open their mouth and start talking, and even then, you'd have to be at a certain level to understand that they have had a direct experience where they're really saying some fucking deep shit and not like in like until you've had some pretty fucking crazy experiences you don't know you just don't know they'd seem they'd seem like a really nice person and maybe you would notice if you were in a situation where you were just sitting and chilling with them you may be able to feel that stillness that they have inside but generally if you're chatting to them you're like hey how's it going they're just going to be chatting to you you wouldn't Mm. you wouldn't you wouldn't really realize it now Mm. again if they're doing something like doing a, a healing, calling in spirit, doing some kind of a ceremony, you will feel much more than with like some normal person doing the same thing. You you will feel an energy. You'll be like, whoa. Mm-hmm. Because the more you are connected to all that is, mm-hmm. when you tap into those energies, whether they're other spirits, other beings, Christ, Buddha, mm-hmm. uh, source, whatever it is, mm-hmm. when you really know that you are that and you're talking about it, man, it comes in mm-hmm. like fucking crazy Mm. you see what i'm saying if you're disconnected totally in your ego and you're and all Mm -hmm. you want is a fucking ferrari so you can get more chicks Mm -hmm. 
you can say the words you know, mm-hmm. of some incantation or bring it in here. It's not the same. It's all the energy behind it, yeah. So, so, so you will, in certain situations like that, you may feel like, whoa, wow, a lot is coming through this person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But man, I'm telling you, like one of my teachers, it's like all, all of them, I had no fucking idea how high level they were and they don't reveal it. They don't show it because people, it, 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 they won't get it. It'll seem strange and weird or mystical. And but as I I've noticed, like as I was waking up, they show you more and more. And at some point, when you really pop, you just know. You you know, and they you know, and you look at them, and they look at you, and everyone knows. <laughs> like everyone knows, but it's it's unbelievable. Like one one of my teachers, she just kept like I thought. Okay, so we're talking about this is interesting. We're talking about spiritual ego, right? So I had um when I had the the New York experience, which was pretty fucking big it was like your ego death when you just screamed that it. no no that not that one that was all the way that was like i may never have an experience of that level that that was just that was a uh, insane the one before that still it wasn't that i went through a death in new york it was just i woke up to the truth that i was never a person to begin with and it was absurd that i ever thought i believed that and i was feeling that i was it, there was still some level of it was it's a contradiction again it's like i am god but yet god is there and i'm communicating with god and i have a question and the the answer to the question is there so even though i'm not god right now ultimately i know still i'm god and so is everybody and always was and there's not there's no sentient being in the world that isn't that and i know that and it just was but it was a remembering it's like holy fuck how did i not know this 5 minutes ago mm-hmm. how could i ever have thought that i was anything but god mm-hmm. and that everyone else was too and they just they don't know it mm-hmm. it was fucking mind blowing and even after that, and, and I calibrated, and it was, it was over 900 on the scale. So fucking huge experience. There, there are people giving seminars around the world claiming they've never had that experience. And I can muscle test people, and I look, look at them, and I can hear the words coming out of their mouth, and I know they haven't had it. They, they, they've had some experience. They know sort of kind of to that degree. No mm-hmm. fucking way. And I know it. Um, and so even after that, I thought I was enlightened. And for a day, or well, actually, honestly, for six days, I was. I was in such a high state for six days. There was no separation between me and God. I was sitting around. There was no need to talk. There was no need to do anything. I couldn't even eat. There was so much energy flowing through me. It was literally, and at that level, for six days, it was literally six days. If you sat next to me and I said nothing, you would be. Ch- you would feel it. You'd be like, holy fucking shit. Your mind would quiet and you would feel emanating from me that absolute peace and bliss of, and you would you would not want to leave my presence and people were hanging around and people were having experiences i wasn't saying shit i would look at someone for a couple minutes and go back to just being and they were they were literally were like what the fuck is going on other people were having meltdowns around me because i was in such a state of truth and peace and love they were in their egos and i'd see people around me having meltdowns mm-hmm. just freaking the fuck out and i'm like hey man everything is okay and they're just like but this and this and I got this problem and because I was in such a state of peace, just me being in that state and them being in the chaos of ego, they were start, it was starting to, like, I don't even know. Mm-hmm. People were freaking the fuck out. Mm-hmm. It was insane. So my point was, even after that, I thought, I mean, oh, months later, I thought I was enlightened. No, I was enlightened for six days. I could talk about it. I could tell you fucking crazy shit that I absolutely know to be true. But three months after that, no. And even after that, I was hanging out with one of my teachers and she made a comment to me and I just said, oh, my purpose in the world is to wake people and do this. And she just looked at me and she said, no, your purpose is to wake up. And it struck me because I'm like, bitch, what are you talking about? I'm, I'm awake. No. <laughs> Compared to her, I wasn't. Because she, she'd woken up at an experience of 1,000, complete God consciousness, total body orgasm, like complete dissolution, death of the ego, absolute. Like completely came out of the belief that she's a person. And she's basically, you know, she, that, that's where she's at. It, very, very, very high level, and she calibrates in the mid 800s all the time. Not sometimes, she's in the mid 800s. She's had the thousand full awakening, and she's always in the mid 800s. So, and at that time, I was in the 500s, in the state of love, very, very good, had this crazy experience, and yet I still hadn't really woken up. I mean, I had, but I was still, and I was telling that story with the ego, still, oh yeah, this happened, blah, blah, blah. After the, the full, 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 there was nothing to say. There yeah. was nothing to say to anybody. It's interesting. There was it's, no it's, reason it's, it's to like talk. It's like all ego. It's like, oh, I was awakened. It's like, no, that was the ego saying you were awakened. That's right. Isn't it interesting That's how right. the ego likes to take credit for things it doesn't do? You know, like, I, I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's funny. I, I've kind of almost tricked my ego into something. Um, and this has been really helpful for me in my life's journey. 
is typically the ego hates any kind of criticism because it's like, Fuck, yeah. that's not good. No, no, that's bad. No, that hurts hates me. It. Hates, hates it. Hates it. Hates it. Hates it. But what I've told the, my own ego is, ah, but if they criticize you and you get better, people will like you more. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. okay. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting reframe. And, 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 then, and then my ego's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. I like that. So like my ego, I, I tricked my ego into that. It's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, give me that. Like, they'll like me more? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. That's Tell really me. funny. And I've like, li- I've like <laughs> lied to my ego. I'm like, I'm doing this like mind fuck with my ego. <laughs> so now I've like taught myself to like this. It's like, or you're going to be a better person. Or people are going to like you. But it's funny. It's like I've tricked my ego into liking its own destruction. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. That's really interesting. And it was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Because the more, the more you quiet the ego, it's like, hey, guess what, ego? People are going to like you more if you're quieter. Oh, oh really? Oh, is yeah, that right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh is, this, is this the right level? Yeah, yeah, you're doing good. Yeah, you're doing good, buddy. Oh, okay, just let me know. It's like, okay, I'll let you know. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, appealing to the ego to get it to do things it normally would resist. Exactly. That's very interesting, yeah. So it's almost like, it's almost like you're talking to an infant. Yeah. It's, it's like you're talking to an infant, and the infant's like, you know, if you clean up your room, something, something, like you're going to get a reward. Like you're tricking them into doing what you want them to do. It's a Hegelian dialectic. I'm basically giving it two false options to give it to my own God wills option. It's like, oh, I'm, right. I'm going to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and it works. Whatever works. Yeah. It works. It's a nice little e- yeah. ego hack. It's an ego That's hack, good. dude. Yeah, yeah that yeah. was great. But the thing is, like, I didn't, I didn't come up with that. <laughs> that was like God, like, oh, here you go. Here's here a good go. one. Here's, Here's a little like, hack for you, son. It's like, this will help you. Oh. So, what, so what I was going to say before uh-huh. is like... Yeah, the ego, like you have this experience uh-huh. and the irony being the experience was actually the dissolution of the ego. Mm-hmm. Completely, like remembering that you're not that, you're not the series of thoughts or fears or words, you're not that person, you're none of it, you're mm-hmm. all it is. Mm-hmm. And slowly, 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 as you go into a more relatively normal state of consciousness, which generally happens to people, yeah. the ego then, oh, Wow, I could use that. That was a big spiritual experience. Wow, mm. I must be a very special person. I must be very special. I must special. be very special. <laughs> Let's go tell everyone how how special I am after having this experience. Yeah. And, and so and so, but it was such a profound. It, it, it did. I did want to talk about it. It was fucking insane. It was yeah. the realization is so the remembering is so fucking. I was telling my friends and all this kind of shit. Yeah. But after the full the full on one thousand, like literally experiencing that state of just. There's no person, there's no time, there's no past, future, there's no now. There's just everything that is, is uh-huh. me. Existence itself is just myself. There is nothing else. Yeah. There never was. There never could be anything but that. There's just is what is, which is, just, is it's just everything. everything. That's the state. And that beingness is joy and bliss beyond imagination because all the suffering comes from the person. People don't like me. I'm going to get old and, and, and I'm going to die. Or yeah. I, you know, I'm not making enough money. I can't get a girl. All yeah. that stuff. It's all the person. Yeah. When you're just all that is, yeah. there's nothing lacking. There's no problems. Yeah. It's, 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 it's li- like remembering you're not a person is absolute. That's what they call it, liberation. After the yeah. New York experience, I already knew what liberation yeah. was. It's, it's the dropping of the, the, re- the remembering that you were never a person. Yeah. All the problems are gone. So what do you they think? They were never real in the first place. Yeah. So yeah. after the big, big one, and mm-hmm. I don't know, you know, after the big one, uh, and I'm scared to even say it's the final one because I think, I think there's, there's more coming, but it may not be like that. But anyway, I don't know. <laughs> but apparently, anyway, th- th- it's another topic. But, but after that, there's nothing to say. There, there's literally nothing to say. There's no reason to try and wake anyone up. Everyone is God. Everyone's going to wake up exactly when they're supposed to. The universe is going to do everything. It, could be, it can't be. Everyone's process is fucking perfect. Yeah. Everything is perfect. There's nothing to rush. There's nothing to tell anybody. Everything's God perfect. is running everything. Everything is God. Yeah. What could I possibly tell any other aspect of myself that would help? There's nothing to be said. Yeah. Just you can literally allow it all to unfold. Everyone's immortal. Even people that fuck it up. Screw it up, accidentally kill themselves, commit suicide. It doesn't matter. You're, everyone is God. Mm-hmm. Everyone is infinite. Everyone is immortal. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing they can do about it. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. 
There's no way you cannot exist. There's no way you can fuck it up. God is not counting score for all you fuck that life up. No, it is absolute love. It is absolute forgiveness all the way. Mm -hmm. You can never do it wrong. Mm -hmm. And after that awakening, yeah. What do you want me to? They're literally, and that's why many people they go and and I, I had a brilliant, brilliant uh, conversation with Swami Rahaisa, who's a, who's a fucking enlightened master, who's amazing, and and you know, and he explained to me the difference of there's two different types of um, uh, ways you can go after you pop. There's the uh, bodhisattva, uh, bodhisattva, bodhisattva, which is you dedicate your life to the liberation of all beings, yep. uh, and there's the other one, which I forget the name. He talks about in the podcast, and it's basically. Uh, you just, you realize because you're everything and it makes no fucking difference what you do at all in this body because you're everything forever. Mm -hmm. They just fuck off and do nothing. They literally, they laugh at people who are trying to do anything. There's nothing to do. They'll go off into a mountain and they'll fucking, and they'll just be with God. There's, there's nothing to do. Yeah. And I have, and so as I had the final, final, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the big one, mm -hmm. it, I was 100% body. Like there was literally after I sort of, day two or three after that where I just absorbed it and I'm like okay and it was total peace no mind nothing going on in the, at all in terms of thinking nothing just mm -hmm. peace and I'm talking to Paul and I'm like we're gonna wake up everybody everybody that's the only thing that was that, that, that was to do with the body was just the liberation of all beings the, because I was liberated there wasn't anything else that would even occur to me to do but don't nothing you, but I, wait wait yeah. nothing, nothing nothing so I know I'm Bodhisattva that's just me but the pull, the pull was there for, there were points after that, months later, where, because I see it all and the, the you know, I just want to sit and be at peace and all the world stuff doing this and logging into this account, and paying all this shit. There was literally a point where I was like, I could drop everything. I could drop everything, go to a fucking monastery and just do nothing for the next five years and it would be great. And it was tempting. You have no idea the temptation to drop the world, to drop everything. And it took soul searching. It really took soul searching to be like, what am I going to do here? And then I knew it. It just literally just came up and I went, okay, that's not me. I'm here to, to wake up everyone. That's, that's who I, on a soul level, that's my contract. I know I'm Bodhisattva. That's why right after my awakening, it was so, it was, it was absolutely clear. It was like, you have to wake up everyone, literally. And that's actually what came through me the, when Christ spoke through me. That was literally what was said. Whether I have to be here 100 years or 500, I will not leave this realm till all of my brothers were liberated. Yeah. That was Christ and me speaking together. Yeah. That's, that's me. That's what I'm about. I will not go into it. I might take a vacation. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to fucking go meditate for three months. It's good for me. But ultimately, I am here and I will not stop my work until every soul wakes up. And I know that. And what's crazy is I know I can be in this very body I'm using now to speak. I can be in that body, this one, until everybody pops on this planet. Hey now, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. It's me, Alex Lazarev, a.k.a. Sasha. And I uh, just wanted to let you know, for all you guys that are working on yourselves and you're really like doing the healing and doing the loving and raising your vibration and it's beautiful, but I wanted to let you know if you want to take it a little bit further and I'm offering a course that's really, really going to be pretty profound. It's called Comedy Therapy. I've done it all around the world live, and for the first time ever, I will be doing it virtually. So what the course is, it's about getting vulnerable. It's about getting okay with our, our, our shit, our story, our limiting beliefs, all of the little things that we have going on that we know are taking away from our, you know, that divine perfection that we truly are. But recognizing that we are imperfect as human beings and being able to to connect with other people without the mask to show people all of us our shit our good our light and our fucked up beliefs and traumas and imperfections you know and so not only will we will we be sharing who we are on that deep level and connecting deeply with each other in the group i'm going to show you how to turn your personal story into comedy how to actually write jokes and how to do storytelling so you can share who you are and your your whole story, even the bad parts that you don't want to talk about, in a fun way. It is a blast. You will laugh your ass off on this course. And for the rest of your life, you will be able to connect with people on a much deeper level. I promise you that. And, of course, you're going to face your biggest fear doing stand-up comedy, public speaking. It is powerful. After you do that, you will never be the same. So if that sounds great and you're interested in finding out more about the course and working with me over eight weeks, check out infinitemansummit.com slash comedy. And hopefully I'll see you there. Know that I love you and that you are loved and enjoy.
the rest of your podcast. If I have to be here 500 years, yeah. I could be. And, I've, and I've, I've felt it and I've been basically shown like you are here for this work and you have permission until you're like, fuck this, I'm done. You can be here healthy, not getting old, not getting sick, nothing because you are, this is what you're here for. Mm. There's, was, no, there's, no, there's no expiration on this. Expiration on this is like when everybody wakes the fuck up and mm. this is a total paradise, then you, can, then you can go, okay, I'm up. I resonate with that a lot. Yeah. So I got two questions for you as you were talking to me. Um, you said that there's like your own will, like your ego's will and God's will, but then you were talking about the sense of God consciousness. So I think I've already answered my own question, but I want to see what you say to this. Do you think that God's will is God consciousness or do you think they're separate things? Like when you are doing God's will, are you living in a state of God's consciousness? Well, I'll put it this way. When you're, when you're really, really in alignment with yeah. your soul, mm-hmm. right? And you're, the ego is just, you're just ignoring it. You're really tapped in on the deep level, mm-hmm. like really your joy, your excitement, mm-hmm. you know, in accordance with God. Well, when you're really, really in that, you are generally speaking, you're in that when you're in that vibration, when you're really tuning in. Mm-hmm. Like if you're, if you're, again, like you're more likely to be in that if you just went to a meditation retreat or you've just been at service helping eat, feed hungry people, whatever, certain actions that are in alignment with service to others, which is mm-hmm. all you, mm-hmm. right what I'm saying? So, so when you're in that, following your excitement, doing good, doing mm-hmm. God's work, naturally your vibration is going closer and closer to God. Mm. I mean, imagine someone who for the last five years has just been literally feeding hungry, hungry people or trying to wake people, doing good mm. really from the heart. And mm. it's their excitement versus somebody who for the last five years has been uh, developing programming software that allowed them to trade and make millions of dollars so that they can fucking buy fancy cars in a big mansion so mm-hmm. they can get more bitches. Which one is going to be in a higher vibrational frequency? I mean, mm-hmm. what do you think? One is just ego 100%. The other one is, or not 100, but let's say 90, you know, 95%. Mm-hmm. And the other one's going to be pff, like fucking popping off. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, it's they're everything. It's interlinked. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. you don't think they're the same thing? Because what it, what it appears to me, what you're saying is this. Well, if, God, you're, in, if you're in those higher levels of consciousness, naturally, you're, that means you are closer to the truth of oneness. Yeah. So how is that going to dictate your actions? I mean, it's going to change everything. Would you yeah. go over there and rob that guy or on the fucking street corner oh. when you know it's you, yeah. he's you? Of course not. It's impossible. But it's very interesting because it almost seemed like God consciousness is like there's nothing to do. Everything is perfect. But at the same time, you could say God's will is I have to wake everybody up. And that's doing so much. So there's another spiritual paradox there. Yep. Like is, is it is all just one and I don't need to do anything or I need to wake people up? Because I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, if everybody, if everybody is part of God, I'm not going to say everybody is God. And I know we've talked about this before. If everybody is part of God and they're all on their own spiritual journeys, it doesn't matter if you wake, if you try to wake them up or not, when the student's ready, the teacher comes. So it's like they chose to forget who they were to experience more of themselves. Right. And it's not your responsibility to do that. I mean, you could be there when they're ready for that, but you can't, uh, there was a really great quote from um, somebody I really liked it. It says, truth cannot be told. It can only be realized, right? So it's like, I can tell you two plus two is four. Two plus two is four, and you won't believe it. But until you actually like, oh yeah, two plus two is four. It's like, you have to come to that realization yourself. You can't force that upon somebody. No. It's, 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 I, I, I hate to sound so new agey, but it's a vibration. Like, it's like, I will not get on 90.5 FM. I will not get that radio station unless I tune to it, right? I'm going to be listening to this specific radio station until I tune to that radio station. And maybe that, that, it's just that, that, getting that, tired so... of a radio station or maybe it's just like, all right, I'm ready for a different radio station. Or I'm tired of listening to the same soundtrack. Yeah, it has to come from within. It, it has to come from within. It has to come from within. And you can't force it. So that's getting back to the divine paradox of yeah. why do anything? You know, they're going to do it yourself. And divine that's paradox. that and that's so tough because that's that fracturing of that ego that we were talking about earlier before we started recording was that like when you're telling the story of, oh Don, I'm Don or or I'm Sasha and Don does this or Sasha does this or Sasha's funny or Don's whatever, you know, like it doesn't matter. No. But at the same time it does matter. Because you need to run that script. So how does one properly run that script without pretending it's a script? Or without, without forgetting it's a forgetting, script, I'm right. sorry. Yeah. yeah. 
So <laughs> you know what I that's mean? That's a good question. Yeah. And, so, that, and that's and that's what we were talking about privately yeah. before we yeah. recorded this is taking the time to tap into that space, mm-hmm. tap into that God, you know, whatever you want to call that it, God that consciousness, oneness, yeah. God consciousness, mm-hmm. really, yeah. you know, can say higher self. Yeah. They're all just words, yeah. but tapping into that truth. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's playing the character consciously, mm-hmm. and also recognizing that each soul has its own unique um, adventure and uh, learning and seeking that it's doing in this lifetime. So, for example, um, mine happens to be waking people the fuck up. That's it. It's always been that. Yeah. Uh, that that's just my thing. Yeah. But someone else's thing might be they're just gonna be the best dad ever. They're going to have a bunch of kids and they're just going to love on those kids and they're experiencing what it's like to be a dad. Mm-hmm. And someone else might be going, I'd like my, 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 my experience is going to be what it's like to completely waste a life. My, mm. my experience is going to be to die in a deathbed and not know and just realize in that moment that I've done absolutely fucking nothing <laughs> and that's going to make me fucking realize at that last second how important life is and in the next round I'm going to kick ass and this, 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 this one I'm just going to piss this one away. As weird as that is, some people are down here fucking doing nothing and that's okay too mm-hmm. it's fucking weird I know to, a lot of people like that yeah and that's perfect because God wants to <laughs> yeah. know what it's like to do absolutely jack shit and waste a fucking human life just as much as God wants to know how to be somebody who achieves fucking enlightenment yeah. and fucking pops and goes back to God and holy yeah. shit and just like someone else who, who is going to be a kung fu master and teach uh-huh. kung fu and someone else who is going to just have sex with thousands of women and become a sex fucking God yeah. nothing is wrong yeah. Now the only area that gets into to you can say wrong, uh, it's not that even wrong. It's just um, it, it, it's it's violating other people's sovereignty, mm-hmm. of murder, that, like really hurting yeah. other beings because it's all you. A violation of natural rights. Yeah, yeah. natural law is real. Yeah. there are nat- totally there is natural, natural law it's and a natural science. rights. Yeah, yeah, it's a science. It, it is. So so that is that is wrong, and there are there are uh, yeah there are consequences. Um, for that but but other than that if you're just doing your thing you're not hurting anybody there is nothing wrong but no. everybody when you realize everyone and this is the biggest thing and was the hardest thing for me mm-hmm. because I'm trying to shake my old friends mm-hmm. that I've had for years I'm trying to wake them up mm-hmm. you know like there's a purpose wake mm-hmm. up find your find your passion what are you doing here mm-hmm. you know I'm trying to shake fucking people up mm-hmm. to do this and, and some people they're in a deep sleep and they don't want to wake up oh. and I had it was so difficult for me and now mm-hmm. I'm I'm not going to say I'm 100% there but I yeah. you know I get it and I'm getting better I would say there's no need to worry about anyone. There's no need to force myself. Or even though I'm coming from a good place, I'd be inter. And I get it now that I'm interfering with somebody's uh, awakening process with their life path. If I'm forcing on them anything about waking up, anything. Yeah, yeah. If your purpose, if you're supposed to be here and work some shitty job that you hate mm-hmm. and just play video games and get fat mm-hmm. until you're 68 years old. Yeah. And then you're going to realize something then and maybe have some kind of shift and then you're going to die at 72. But those last four years are going to be really, really awesome. Mm-hmm. Then that's the path for you and that's fine. That's if I'm supposed to help you wake up, mm-hmm. you'll come to me. I'll know. But, something will yeah. happen. Someone, you know, and, and mm-hmm. it's like, it's like I just put it out to the universe. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just putting out my vibration. I make yeah. my podcasts. Yeah. I put out my videos. I help any, any, everyone yeah. around me as much as I can. And the people who resonate and they want to hang around and they ask me questions, I'll help them as much as I can. Mm-hmm. If the universe wants me to help... 40 fucking million people mm-hmm. uh, I'm gonna get a phone call tomorrow and they're gonna be like hey you wanna come on this Joe Rogan show or yeah. something so I know that I'm yeah. open for it mm-hmm. but there's, but because I'm, I'm just separating from that ego mm-hmm. you know there's no need for me to, to, to try really really hard to like make it and be huge and get it no yeah. I wanna help lots of people yeah. but, but, but all I can really do and the, the, the way to do this is actually to be in my vibration do mm-hmm. what I love the most mm-hmm. put the energy in that shine my light bright mm-hmm. and, and say to God if you want me to go bigger if you want to use me for more, I'm down. Yeah. But if you want me to play at this level I'm and do my thing, cool. Yeah, I'm up <laughs> yeah, for it. Yeah. I'm up for it, sure. Yeah. But, but before, there was this ego that's like, you have skills, you should be more famous, you should do this, 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 this. Mm. Dude, I'm being me. Just I am being, being myself. Dude, I you're incarnated. Right, yeah. There's nothing for me to do but be yeah. me. That's yeah. it. You're Live right. authentically and yeah. be me. The more attractive you are, but it's also very interesting because that's sort of like a paradox because you're being authentically yourself, but we were talking about how you were telling me that I was running the Don story too much. It's like, I know that these past four days that we've been talking with each other, I've been, dude, I've been feeling great, man. Because I know that you're kicking ass with what you're doing. And we're, in a lot of respects, on the same page about what we want to do with humanity. Mm-hmm. We, we get it. We get what's going on. We see the value of it. We see the importance of doing it. And we're doing something that's funny and we're both mutually enjoying. 
right? So it's like naturally you're going to feel a lot of excitement. Naturally, you're going to feel a lot of bliss. Naturally, you're going to be hype, right? You're going to be hype about that. And something that I notice is that when you start shining, you attract a lot of moths, right? So it's, so I, I always have to ask myself, I'm like, am I attracting moths or is this teaching me something or is it both, right? Am I attracting moths? Is it teaching me something or is it both? And then I think, okay, with every, this is something I really like to tell myself, with every bit of criticism comes a gold nugget. There's two different types of criticism. There's one kind of criticism, which is a direct reflection of bitterness and anger within yourself. And there is a, another type of criticism, which is genuine criticism, which is good, which can show you something. Genuine criticism wouldn't even come off as criticism. It mm-hmm. would just be an observation. It'd be an observation. It would just be like, That's hey, right. you know, you know mm-hmm. would you like to hear an observation yeah. about you? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, whenever, whenever you're you know, doing that, you, you do this one thing. Mm-hmm. And some people... Yeah. Might be you know yeah. a little bit you know feeling weird about yeah. that yeah yeah just an observation yeah. so I yeah. yeah so something that has helped me on my journey is I've 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 meditated on that concept of like okay so how do I determine the difference between a genuine sense of criticism and something that's just vitriol what yeah sit back oh and, sit back yeah because yeah, yeah. then the volume won't be the oh, same oh yeah totally yeah, yeah yeah um how do I determine what's a genuine sense of criticism and what is just straight vitriol. And something that's helped me differentiate between those two is how do I feel afterwards? Does it feel like, does it feel like I'm empowered? Like, ah, if I use this, this is going to be, this is going to be beneficial to me. Or does it feel like somebody drained me? Like, do I feel, do I feel tired? Am I literally yawning? Am I like, do I feel exhausted? Like, oh my gosh, I'm exhausted. I feel like I'm walking on eggshells. I feel like I have to. I feel like I have to be somebody I'm not. That's when I know that that's not true criticism, right? And and that takes a lot of internal like, hmm, figuring it out and saying, ah, I see, okay. But then you take the next step. And this is something that I was telling you about before, about the, the things that I've learned the most in life is with dealing with difficult men is the next step is if it's not true criticism, establishing that boundary. And I notice, and this is a very interesting phenomenon, that difficult men can be very attacking and can really dish it out, but have a very difficult time taking it. And it's a very asymmetrical relationship because they'll dish it out, they'll dish it out, they'll dish it out, they'll dish it out, and they won't realize that they're dishing it out until somebody goes, bam, nope, fuck you. And they they flip the mirror right on them and they're like, and they freak out. So it's just like, and, and that, that's really empowering. When you can not feel drained by it, but feel empowered by it, know what it is for what it is, flip the mirror on them and be like, mm. and then take it the next, next step further and say, it's okay. Don't worry about it. And be there when they freak out, right? It's, it's interesting. So it's, it's, but it, 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 takes a, it takes a lot of self-awareness. Right, a lot of self awareness and a lot of trial and error, and that trial and error is scary, because people don't like to be confrontational. People don't like to be yelled at. People don't like to be picked on. People don't like to be at the butt of a joke. But if you have that happen enough, and that's the cycle that happens enough, you're like, oh, okay, something's going on here. I got to learn from this, and then and then it shows you how to establish boundaries, and you'll come to find that very difficult people will respect you a hell of a lot more. If you establish a boundary between them, they might not like you, but they'll respect you for it. And that's empowering, man. And that is something I don't think many people choose to do. I don't even think they're aware of it, let alone decide to penetrate into it and do something about it and determine what it is, right? But it it has to do with a feeling. Like, how does this make me feel, right? And you can tell when somebody's genuinely approaching it from a sense of out of love Mm -hmm. and compassion. But most people don't want to be confrontational in the first place. So if you really do want to learn yourself, you have to come from a state of desire, heart-based desire. That's why I said like, no, I genuinely enjoy criticism. What do you think about this? Like I'm, I'm genuinely interested in learning that. And that's what kind of opens up a gate of somebody to feel like they don't have to be on their guard. Because a lot of people don't like to pick on people. They just kind of let it go. And some people can be very attacking and not tactful. There's a balance of tact and 
it's it's all a balance, man. It's like a Tao to it. There's, there's there's a rhythm of it. Like you're too loud, you're too soft, you're too da da da, da and you're just kind of like twisting the master mixing board. Like okay, there's a little there, and oh no, no, no okay, okay, we're good. Oh no, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> you know. So what do you think about that? Yeah. It's a delicate balance, you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's almost like someone has to make that decision on their own that they even want to improve. If mm. someone hasn't literally had a moment in their life where they go, you know what? I want to become the best for, you know, I want to become the best, best version of me possible. Yeah. They're not, they're probably not even going to be open to Mm-mm. even the most gentle way of, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Improving. Even if you're like, hey, listen, um, are you interested in, you know, uh, personal development or, or mm-hmm. like, you know, bettering mm-hmm. yourself or something? They'll go. Oh yeah, I guess so. But if you were actually later try and tell them, they're, they're not. Mm. They're gonna. They're gonna turn off. I'm yeah. T- I'm t- it's. I'm telling you. Mm. It's almost like you can put. No, the, I know. It's yeah. like you. It's like you can literally split humans into two groups. Yeah. People who have made the decision to improve. Mm-hmm. Everyone else, and the people in the group that haven't made that decision, mm-hmm. they're they're not ready. Mm-hmm. They're not ready. Now you could, in theory, if someone's close to you, mm-hmm. get into it and inspire them. Hey, mm-hmm. maybe read this book or mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. But again, nine times out of ten, you say to someone, Hey. Mm-hmm. Would you like to read a you know a book that, that might change your life? Mm-hmm. They'll go, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're mm-hmm. not actually going to read the book. Yeah, they're not. They're no. not going to read the book. They're not no. going to buy the book. They're not going to do it. Even if you give them the book, yeah. a year later, Dude. they haven't read the book. <laughs> I and know. It's just human nature. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Once they've yeah. made the decision uh-huh. that they want to wake the fuck up mm-hmm. or they want to improve, mm-hmm. and they come and you're like, yeah, do you have a book? I mean, I'd like to you know just work on my. Do you have a, do you have a good book? And I'll look at them and yeah. be like, yeah. They're like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. You're going to read it. Yep. Yep. All right. Yeah. What, yep. what kind of stuff? You need? Then you're okay. Then you're yeah. off to the horses. Then you know. But if they have not independently decided they want to either wake mm-hmm. up or work on themselves mm-hmm. don't waste your motherfucking breath don't pass so don't far, cast pearls before swine th- yeah what an expression don't that is. don't cast pearls before swine no and that's great and but, it makes life yeah. so much easier oh yeah because you could just do your thing mm-hmm. and this again it comes down to what we said before you're shining your light mm-hmm. do your thing whatever mm-hmm. your thing is whether it's mm-hmm. art being funny even just being the best veterinarian mm-hmm. being the best mom or dad whatever mm-hmm. it is shine be mm-hmm. amazing mm-hmm. and if somebody senses that energy and, mm-hmm. and they come up to you and they go man you know you're you're really happy or your mm-hmm. energy is great what's your what's your secret now there's an opening mm. there's an opening where you can say well actually mm. I've, you know I used to be an asshole or I actually mm-hmm. wasn't this happy at all but I you mm-hmm. know I've been working on myself a lot mm-hmm. you know are, why are you interested in uh, in working on yourself mm-hmm. and if then in that moment they go well actually if, if I could be more happy like you I mean mm-hmm. I, I would like to explore that totally okay yeah. Mm-hmm. Then you're off. Yeah. But unless they came up to you mm-hmm. because of your vibration or your mm-hmm. attitude or your mm-hmm. how fun, whatever it is, mm-hmm. whatever reason, mm-hmm. forget about it. Yeah, that's awesome. I really like that. And and as 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 we're talking about this, I'm I'm sort of thinking in a lot of respects, waking, getting somebody to choose to wake up, is like sales. It's interesting because people don't choose to wake up because. Primarily, they don't see the value in it. They don't see the value. Like, why would this product or service benefit me? And it's about marketing. It's about convincing. It's like, this is what's going to make your life better. You're going to be more attractive, such and such and so and so. But it's like trying to sell somebody on life insurance. Like, nobody wants to buy life insurance because it's just about you dying, right? Yeah, it's literally like selling life insurance for your ego. <laughs> like when your ego dies, <laughs> like it's going to suck, but it's going to it's going to be good in the end. Right? So, waking people up is about showing them the value of waking up through living the value yourself. So when you were saying like you're feeling this value, you're feeling this love, and all you can do is just be that value to other people. And if people see the value of who you are, they could be they could take two routes. They could say, "Oh, great, I'm just going to take from you." Or they can learn from you and try to, there you, go. you know, like do that, right? There you go. So and, and, he, and here, yeah. here's, here's where it gets mm-hmm. next level interesting. Mm-hmm. The really and it's it, and it, there's a couple of my teachers who are who are really fucking high high level, high mm-hmm. high high, mm-hmm. full fucking enlightened beings, and they give love so much and so mm-hmm. much and so much, even to the point where even when people have fucked them over, mm-hmm. literally fucked them over yeah. or taken tons of out. They'll keep loving on They'll them. They'll just keep loving. It's I, I I'm blown away. I'm mm-hmm. literally like, hey, I'm relatively high level, and uh, and I and I and and, and I would have been like, I, I'm you know, I'm not I'm not a beginner. Let's put it that way. And I'm looking yeah. at them going, I couldn't, 
No. Yeah. There's still enough ego in me where if someone did that to me, I'd be like, no, no, I'm not talking. I'm, you're done. Yeah, you're done. Really? Yeah. I'm just, it's the truth. Mm-hmm. And they're still fucking loving and unconditionally. I'm just like, really? How the fuck are you doing that? But then I have another teacher who's way the fuck up there and she's like, nope. She won't even hang out with, she, she will not hang out with people. Get this. Unless they're, they're old friends of hers or whatever, that they're really on high level mm-hmm. with her or new people, how I got in, Spirit literally said to her, teach this guy. Mm. Literally. She was given instructions to help me. Mm. Everyone else that asks her, and a lot of people do with, with mm-hmm. this teacher, she's like, yeah, yeah nice to... No. Mm. No. She's in her bliss all the time. She does exactly what she loves. She's always fucking on it. Mm. She will not have shit to do with you. She'll mm-hmm. smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's doing her joy all the time unless she gets instructions. Mm-hmm. Like, you're going to fucking help. Mm-hmm. Instructions. Mm-hmm. She yeah. was not going to do it. Mm-hmm. She's not interested. Mm-hmm. She's got her own fucking... She's in a state of bliss all the time doing mm-hmm. her thing. Yeah. She's not interested in shit. Yeah. And I used to think she was aloof. Doesn't I'm like, but you have so much wisdom. You, could, you should do podcasts or do videos or help the world. And she's mm-hmm. had the absolute awakening where mm-hmm. she's like, there's nothing for me to do, honey. If I'm mm-hmm. supposed to do something, spirit will show me to do it, and I will. Mm-hmm. And how, she just has a blood. 50s. 50s, yeah. 50s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting how that how that all works. Yeah. So I want to go back to that point of of showing the value of waking up. Because you can't you can't force somebody to buy this cup of coffee. You have to show them why it's the best cup of coffee, right? So in your experience cuz these are actually new thoughts. I've never considered these thoughts. It's interesting when they get in when we get in this kind of conversation. It's almost like spirit talks to you. It's like it's like Don steps back. It's like, hey, Spirit, you're doing a Dude, great job. When like, we, when, this when, is great. You know, yeah. like keep it up. Like, I don't even think I'm saying this right. So, in your opinion, yeah, when you're really in the moment, really yeah. fe- like exploring or mm. doing your thing or teaching, the person is not there. It's not there. The yeah. last few talks I did in Europe, yeah, it wasn't me. It wasn't, it wasn't me there. Yeah. It wasn't me talking. I don't know what the fuck came out of my mouth. Some amazing things happened. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could take credit for them, but I can't. I know. I right? really can't. It's funny. Yeah, the ego would love to go. Man, I did a really good talk, but <laughs> I know that's fucking bullshit. I didn't do any talk. Yeah, Sasha dude. didn't say anything. Yeah. He didn't do anything. It's I funny. was in the room. Yeah, I saw the words coming out of my mouth. I saw people fucking having fucking very interesting experiences, and I'm yeah. like, wow, that's interesting. Wow, you yeah. just went from 480 to 520 in consciousness in the last two hours, and yeah. you're flipping the fuck out because you're in your heart. In your heart. Wow, yeah. that's a trip. Did I do that? No. Yeah. No. I, feel, I can't do that. I feel like Don's like inside of me, like sitting back eating some popcorn, like, oh yeah, this is really good. Like, yeah, keep it up, yeah, keep going. Yeah, He's yeah. Like, He'll come out eventually. Yeah, he will. So um so the question I wanted to follow up with then was um how do you show the value of waking up? How do you show the value of waking up to those that don't want to? Well, I think being happy and fulfilled, mm. just having it being positive, you know what I'm saying? Having that mm. epically high vibration all the time yeah. and being at peace. Being it's at like peace. people, again, here's the thing about the ego. Ego is very tricky. Mm. And if someone's, yeah. really, if someone's really in their ego, they'll yeah. be around someone who's very peaceful or very happy. And they'll be like, that guy thinks he's better than me. <laughs> that fucking guy who does he think he is being yeah, all dude. peace and shit or oh, oh, oh he thinks yeah. he's so great or whatever I mean the ego will literally turn around dude. and have you attack someone who's 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 fucking door, you know borderline enlightened or is actually enlightened and you'll yeah. tell yourself a story oh, fuck that guy who does he think he is being all yeah. happy all the time fuck him yeah really no dude you're it's totally it's fucking right. crazy that, no that's hilarious so there's different levels of ego right yeah. there's like some people you know some people will do that other people are just oblivious or they might just have again the ego will have a story oh that person was just they must have had an easy life they they must be you know they were just born yeah. lucky a trust they fund had baby. trust fund baby. Yeah. whatever the ego yeah. will come up with a story yeah right but but you, you have to have a moment of clarity or a moment of oneness or awakening or something yeah or maybe just a, a fucking breakdown or something yeah to go Maybe it's me. Maybe there's some changes I can make about me mm-hmm. where I could become more like that person. Yes. Then it begins. Then, 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 then it begins. That's right. I've had friends that have seen me go from, you know, where I was just oblivious, arrogant, mm-hmm. fucking just clueless, not mm-hmm. a bad guy, yeah. just fucking no, mm-hmm. no idea what's going on and thinking about other people's feelings and not just doing my thing, being the funniest mm-hmm. comedian, blah, 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 just mm-hmm. a dick in the nicest possible way. And I've seen friends me, watch me go from there. Through becoming like a dating coach, pick up a fucking guru, getting on the spiritual path, have these crazy experience and just be just much more in a state of peace and happiness and whatever. And 
being able to to talk to them about some crazy shit about how to shift in time, mm-hmm. like all kinds of how to shift their beliefs and how to shift into different time, like how to love themselves more, how to heal all this fucking crazy shit. And they're seeing, they're seeing all this going on. Mm-hmm. And they, 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 they haven't for a second went, Hey, do you think I could, how do, do I, do how do that? I do yeah. any of that stuff? Mm-hmm. No, no, they're fine. Mm-hmm. They're fine. What ha, one of them has, mm-hmm. a, has just shitty job, no real social life. Uh, mm-hmm. living in a cocoon doesn't want to take chance like just miserable mm-hmm. relatively miserable mm-hmm. in a cocoon doesn't want to come out doesn't mm-hmm. matter what it doesn't matter I'm just like dude mm-hmm. just read this one book yeah. one of my friends this is so frustrating one of my friends <laughs> great guy really yeah. sweetheart sweet yeah. guy uh, yeah. makes good money yeah. um, really really sweetheart but he has his ego has just picked the beliefs science is real Nothing metaphysical. If all that shit is crazy, yeah. it hasn't been proved by science. Anything, reincarnation, yeah. Yeah. God, anything. None, none of, of it is real. real. He's miserable, and he had a breakdown uh, five, about five years ago. He literally one day had a mini meltdown where he just went, "What the fuck? I just keep working and making money, and I get older, and I die. What the fuck's the point of all this? <laughs> really?" And I went, "Oh, here we go." Now we can talk. Yeah. Now we can have a real conversation. Yeah. Two weeks later, hey man, did you read that book you said you're gonna? Read? Oh no, that was just. What about that moment you had? Ah, no, nah, it was just a mouth. I'm okay now. I'm fine. I'm back to normal. I'm okay. And you know what? That's his path. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. This guy, check this out. This guy lives across, literally across the hallway from one of my main spiritual teachers, who's extremely high level fucking amazing and he knows I've told him I said you literally live across the street from an enlightened master if you want to wake up literally go over there hang out borrow a book yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah. and he's like yeah 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 he's not doing anything <laughs> if I was living there I'd be over there every fucking every day fucking hanging day. out hey can I borrow that book yeah. all the fucking time hanging out yeah no yeah. no no yeah. yeah what do you want me to do nothing yeah. I quit there's nothing for me to yeah, do there's nothing to do yeah. no well, it's interesting. So we're going to go back to that value part because I'm sure that people that are listening to this will want to do... we got to make this a podcast. This, this is coming this up. This is awesome. This is going to come yeah, out yeah. somewhere. So um, talking about value, like like how can we provide more value to show people the, the point of waking up? You could do it yourself. Um, but there's another quote um, um, about some guy who, who uses this wording that I, I like to use a lot because it, it, it's very anti-ego. Um and it just simply is a statement, what's helped me along my journey? There's a big difference between saying, you should do this. Yeah. And saying, huge, huge. what's helped me along my journey? And and it's, it's a really subtle, but it's powerful. And I can't take credit for that. Because it's an invitation. It's an invitation. It's an invitation. Exactly. Uh, what's yeah. his name? Uh, does that all the time on YouTube. Um, black, the black guy. Ralph Smart. Ralph That's Smart. exactly who it is. He's great. He's I, great. I, I, yeah. I love mm-hmm. Ralph Smart. And, yeah. and he's doing it because it's an invitation. It's an invitation. And that is the way to do it. It's yeah. really, really powerful. I had that moment only mm, two years ago where I got it. And I was like, oh, maybe even... No, no, no. Just maybe a year and a bit ago where I really got it. The power of the invitation, the invitation rather than you should yeah. do this or you must yeah, do that or, you, you know, you, you know, blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. Yeah. I would invite you to yeah. consider yeah. that this book could help you. Exactly. Or I would invite you to consider to look at this one behavior you have yeah. that may not be beneficial for you. Yeah. It's an invitation yeah. rather than, hey, man, you know, you got to look at that thing you yeah. do. Yeah. That's no one's going to react yeah. well to that. It's so yes, you yeah. share your story yeah. and hey, this is so, and yeah, it's just, that's, it's an invite. It's yeah. so And what's beautiful. interesting yeah. is that to play along the idea of an invite, it's like the ego likes to be invited. It's like, oh, I'm being invited. That's right. Rather than like, being told I'm, what to do. I'm special. You know, right. I'm inviting myself. I'm just like, oh, I'll walk right in there. You know, that's my ego. You know, like, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's giving them an in to something that can help them. And it's, dude, like, it, it's interesting. I'm kind of getting a, an inspiration to sort of maybe write like an article or something of how to trick the ego into becoming more spiritual. You know, yeah. like, there's ways to do it. Like, invite the ego into doing this. Well, well do sh- this or do that. Just you know? imagine yeah. how cool you'll be when you can tell everybody how enlightened, how enlightened you, are. you are. Exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. man. Yeah, what was, what was weird... For me, and it's happened a couple of times. Uh-huh. You know, you, you're curious to, to see if people have had the awakening experience because you want to talk about it and whatever. And so I've come up to certain beings that I know have been on the spiritual path for mm-hmm. a long time and I'll tell them, hey, yeah, this, you know, I had this realization. And, and they look at me and they're like, 
no, I haven't had that. And they and it, and I'm like, oh, okay. And it's like, I can't talk to them about it because it's it's like you can't really explain it. Mm-hmm. Like you can talk about it, but like it doesn't fucking. It's mean a direct it. it's, knowing. Doesn't mean anything. Yeah. So the people and so one so one of my teachers, we had a conversation a couple weeks ago. The 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 female. I need to come up with a name for her because she she wants to be, remain anonymous for now. Oh yeah. Um. Well, she's the one that told me she's in her fifties and she's the one that told me you know it's an infinity game. That, that, so I'll, I'll just call her, you know, my infinity teacher. Miss, Miss Infinity. You say bab, infinity. boss ass bitch. <laughs> Miss Infinity. <laughs> my bab. But 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 um, she she basically we we're having a great chat. And she she basically was saying. Uh, and just, yeah, I'm trying to remember now what the hell, what, the, what was the last thing you said? Was that the thing I was going to share? It was about, um, oh. <laughs> oh, we're done. That's it. It's over, guys. Yeah. It's, 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 it's totally over. It was like the download stopped. It's like, all right, no more, no more downloads. <laughs> now you turn the download. No, I can get back on the, yeah. on the, on the thing. Get the download back on. There was something she told me that was, uh, that I was, oh yeah, that's right. I got it. So. We were talking, so I basically, I hadn't updated her on my last uh, uh, awakening. I was hoping to see her in person and be like, hey, remember how you said you're going to wake the fuck up? It kind of happened. Is she in Vancouver? No. No. And so I, uh, and so I, I, I was telling her about it. And I said, I'm not going to give you the details, mm-hmm. but, you know, it was the big fucking one mm-hmm. and it lasted for a long time and I'm not really looking anymore. Like that was the answer to the question I was seeking. And mm-hmm. she's like, oh yeah. And I know she already she already had it, mm-hmm. and, and and so, and so she was you know we were starting to talk about that and what you know what how, how to go on and mm-hmm. what it means and we were, I, I had some fucking big questions actually, um, because I'm still integrating it frankly yeah, yeah. so 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 we yeah. we talked about about it and she said to me you know, and she said hey you know Sasha it, I'm really enjoying talking about this with you because she says I can't talk about this with almost anybody Mm -hmm. she says you know she says she was just hanging out with some of her old old friends like i think like 20 30 years yeah and she's like yeah it's fun and we'll talk about world things and we'll eat food and we'll hang on whatever but she's like i can't talk about this stuff with them because they have no fucking clue what i'm talking about i'll seem weird i'll seem crazy and 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 she'll so she'll refer casually she's like, oh yeah i had this you know interesting experience once it was kind of you know but she's not going to go into it because because there's no point and there's just no point so she said yeah, she's like you. You know, there's only, there's very few people we can really talk about it. Man, where you know where where we're just you know what I'm saying. You can't. It's not to be shared. Yeah. And again, uh, Swami Rahisa, uh, also on the podcast, which I I loved. Um, he you know the first thing he said. I spoke to him after I had the New York awakening, and I told him about it, and it was amazing. And I was telling friends, and I was just like, oh my god. And he and he just said to me, dude, you know you as a teacher, you you, you can't teach your highest understanding to people because they won't get it and his example and I'll talk and people have heard, would have heard this but it's worth repeating because it's so fucking interesting and so it's, it's it is very very important and interesting he said to me imagine you had a time machine and you went back in time two weeks right before you had your awakening is there anything you could have said to yourself to make you understand what it is or to prepare you for it in any way I don't think so no fucking way no way there's nothing I could have said no there's way. nothing I could have done he's like but you're and you're the ideal person you're about to have that awakening in two weeks you're the perfect candidate for that teaching is there anything you could have done mm-hmm. to help yourself and I thought about it I was like no. not a thing no. so he's like so imagine you trying to explain it to someone who isn't you what <laughs> <laughs> and I was like how far are they going to get with it and I was like there's no point he's like there's no yeah. point yeah. There's no point. There's no point. Yeah. And yet, being a YouTuber and a podcaster and all about the spiritual woo, I still talk about it and tell everybody. But the only people who are really listening are the people who are interested in that topic. Yeah, it's like you're preaching. Doesn't mean they're it's really like going to preach into the choir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why they're listening to the thing. Yeah. They want to know what yeah. the fuck this is all about. Well, that that's why I had gotten back to the whole premise of how do you provide more value to people to see the value in it. And not necessarily just living it yourself. And not necessarily just well, the invitation. Even, but here's the thing. I can tell you the value in it in a mm-hmm. sentence. But it won't make fucking sense to anyone who's had at least some kind of oneness awakening mm-hmm. ego dissolution experience. And this is why I'm so big on psychedelics. Oh, like yeah. psychedelic therapy. It's huge. Huge on psychedelic therapy because they will make you confront that shadow. They will make you confront Not it. Not necessarily. 
Some well, people might see the right. shadow no, 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 and you're right. freak out and run away and you go, I'm never right. doing that again. You but are they, right. yes. But if you have a good experience, you will realize even, even if the ego drops for a moment, like a moment being one full second, for one moment you go, mm -hmm. I'm connected to everything. Or just, holy fuck, holy I'm more fuck. than this person. Even if it's literally at that moment, That's all you need. that little tiny sneak peek is, can be enough for people to go, okay, I want to research that more. How, do I, how do I get more into that? How do I, what do I do? That's then when someone need. says, well, you can get to that in meditation, can I? Yeah, or if you read this book, mm -hmm. you learn about how to raise your vibration, blah, blah, blah. that might help you. Here's mm -hmm. a book about Tibetan, whatever. Yeah. Now you're on it. And, it's, and, it's, and you start on it. Why? Because yeah. you took some mushrooms. Good for you. Yeah. It's a direct you know? experience. Um, yeah. And it's interesting because I, I really feel like that... This, this is why I'm really passionate with my, my apparel company about supporting maths was because what really helped catalyze me on my journey was a psilocybin experience. I, I don't know if I told you this, but uh, like the first time I really tripped, I was in a graveyard. I don't know if I told you that, but that was hardcore. Uh, anyway, we could talk about that later, but it really helped me realize I'm like, oh my God, there's so much more than just the stupid story I'm telling myself. And that was just catalyzed me. I'm just, geez, like there's nothing more important than this. There's nothing more important than this. this I mean, this is, it's, it's like having a kid, you know, and, and you wake up and you're just, I mean, I've never had a kid before, but I can, I can only imagine what it's like to have a kid. It's like the second you have a kid, you're like, it's no longer about me. It's about the kid. I have to do everything I can for this kid. It, it's like waking up to your own ego. It's like, I don't, I need to wake up. There's nothing more important than this. Jeez, like, come on. So I, I think in a lot of respects, it's, it's sort of like that. And if you can speak about psychedelics in a way that shows them how to see the value in it other than, because I think people are just like, oh, I'm just going to take drugs and see pink elephants and just be stupid and have my brain fried. It's like, no, it's not like that, man. Like, it's not like that at all. I've, I was like, I'm, I actually talked to this kid who asked me a lot of spiritual guidance questions and conspiracy questions. He's still like a, in, the, in the Bible Belt, like Tennessee, and he's still like around like, Christian kids and he's going to ministry and he's, he's a nice kid and everything but he still views the world very much from like a religious dogmatic perspective and I'm like dude you should really consider trying psychedelics and he's just not about it and I think that that's just the ego like the ego subconsciously being like no this is going to destroy me <laughs> it's like no this is going to destroy me you know and um, so if, uh, what I found to be helpful in terms of talking about psychedelics Especially, you, you talk about it from a therapeutic perspective. Like, this is going to help you with therapy. You show them actual clinical trials about it. And you show them, um, and, and you speak to them in a way that they can understand it. In, in something that they can resonate with. So, for example, when I talk to very um, conservative people about it, like super conservative, like very hardcore, right-wing, you know, America, you know, something like that. Um, I will reference them if we ever do get into this type of conversation because um, they typically ask about my business and like what I do and I tell them why, why I do it. Um, I tell them, I said, well, you know, actually there were a lot of soldiers that had PTSD that had taken MDMA in clinical trials and they actually were able to get rid of their depression. And then I follow it up. Oh, sorry. And then I follow it up with this. I say, don't you think that we should do everything in our power to make sure that we can help get our troops get in the best state of mind and get the best treatment that they can get for the service that they've done. Now, I might not necessarily agree with what the troops do, but I'm speaking to them on a level of how they can understand it and how they can appreciate it. Because then they'll be like, oh yeah, I think we should do whatever we can for our troops, and if this is a proven, then, then we should look into that. It's like, that's how you speak to them in, in, that, in that level, right? It, 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 it's like a maze. It's like a navigation. It's like you're saying the same damn thing, but you're, 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 you're moving a little over here and a little over there and don't say that word, but say it this way and, and then they get it, right? So in terms of talking about those different types of things, it's, it helps people understand it more. And, sure, and that, yeah. that's just, we're just getting into persuasion, which is the number one thing. It's, it's like you understand where they're coming from mm -hmm. and what they want and you make yeah. them understand that this thing is actually going to help them right. get it the thing persuasion. that they want. It's persuasion. It is persuasion. Interestingly, mm -hmm. No and that's like pickup too. You know, that's kind all of. pickup. Yeah. But with, with spiritual awakening, uh, so, so, f I, I've, so far my experience suggests you cannot persuade anyone to want to wake up. It has to come from a deep calling from the, from the soul. 
There's yeah. nothing you can say to somebody that's going to make them realize they need to wake up. Nothing. Yeah. They have to get there on their own. And that's why uh, the universe is putting this smack down on a lot of people right now because a lot of people are in a deep, deep sleep. So here's what's happening now. Oh my this gosh. is a wake-up call. Yeah. This is a fucking wake-up call. of yeah. epic. Now, it happens to people on smaller levels too. You know, people get into cancer, you know, mm -hmm. uh, car accidents, cancer, diseases, yeah. cancer, all of these things, you know, whatever, to wake the fuck up. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people have an accident and uh, think, oh, it's just unlucky and not get the message. Not get the message and then wow. manifest another one. And I'm like, dude, why do you think, <sighs> like, they don't even have the, you know, um, introspection or yeah. whatever to just sit and go, why did this happen to me? Is there a reason? Could there be a benefit? Why would I have a car accident? You know, they just think, oh, it's just everything will just happen. Mm. So, and so again, that, that ignorance, that lack of even a little bit of spiritual knowledge or understanding that, you know, things are unfolding, there's a, things happen for a reason, there's a purpose, you, you know what I mean? Like they don't, they're so disconnected from any of that and they're, they're buying into the 3D is real, things mm -hmm. just happen and whatever, yeah. that, that's, that's a real problem. And, and with maybe in certain situations, you might be able to get through, but generally, no. I mean, if, if the universe giving them a car accident yeah. isn't enough to get them to wake the fuck up, you think you're going to have a, you're going to have a chat with them? Yeah. You're going to make them yeah. realize? Good luck. Fuck yeah. off. Yeah, you're not. Yeah. You know? Well, it's, I, it hasn't stopped me from trying, but yeah. the reason I got to where I'm at now is yeah. because I've tried so much and seen that it actually, mm -hmm. it hurts, but it actually it just creates yeah. frustration. Yeah. Yeah. Just allow people on their journey, yeah. shine your light, yeah. and they will come to you and go, why are you so happy? Yeah. What's your secret? What's your and, and, and hey, if somebody asks me, I'll be like, well, wow, fuck, where do, yeah, Jesus Christ, go, don't yeah. get, where do I start? Are you yeah. serious? You know? Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Just be you, man. Do your excitement. Just be you. Be you 100%. Just yeah. fucking do the thing you're here to do fearlessly yeah. without expectations. Fearless just go for it. Yeah. Shine your light. It's like uh, be you, but, have, not, it's like, but it's not you. Being you is not you, right? It's, it's, it's another mm -hmm. layer of yourself. When they say be you, yeah, be your and you're fucking weird, <laughs> it's like don't well then don't be you. You know, be a be a more refined version of you. Like yeah. when when somebody, I, I hate that whole be you crap because what if you're just like a loser? Like like th th yeah, that more, that's a way of accepting. No. Like I'm just gonna well, eat junk the, food and, well, and who, I'm gonna play who, video who, games who, and it's who, like eh, you yeah. know who, like who you who you? It's yeah. like the soul you or the you the ego that's making exactly. excuses yeah. for how for how you're acting like yeah. an idiot and wasting your life. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, which you. So that's why yeah. the expression "be your highest," be your highest, yeah. that, be that's the best it, yeah. version of you. That's so it, the yeah. you that drops the alcohol and the drugs and yeah. loses the weight and starts doing what you love that's and starts right. adding value to the world, that version of you can exist. Hundred percent. You're not doing it now. Yeah. So. But you know. I, I hate that whole crap advice that they give. It's like, be you, honey. Be you. That's like the playground politics, you know, wives' tale kind of deal. It's like, no, don't be you. Be the best version of yourself that you can be and continually refine that version. That's yeah. what they should say. That's what they should say. Well, but they, that they, they don't. don't say anything yeah. they should say yeah. because that would, that would uh, be the end of the entire power structure yeah. of this world. Yep. Uh, if people came into their uh, sovereign uh, power, that, would, that, it, wouldn't, yeah. that wouldn't be any good at all. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well... Well, that was a good talk. That was a good talk. Let's save We're that. right on the hour mark. That's beautiful. And we, oh, have, we have to go off to a meditation in 20 minutes. So. Oh, nice. All right. Wow, that was... There it was, everybody. A conversation with the Don. The Don. Big Woke and the Don. Big Woke. <laughs> Chilling. <woke. laughs> Big Woke. Excellent. Yeah, that was great, man. That was great. Or very nice. Hope you enjoyed, everybody. Bye-bye. Love you, girl.